Hi, welcome to episode 4 of Data Every Day. Today we will be looking at a data set on Kaggle for graduate admissions. So if we look at the data set, you can see it takes a combination of various scores, the university rating, uh, the statement of purpose score, and the letter of recommendation score, along with the GPA, and whether or not the student has a research background to predict the chance of admission into the college of their choice. So let's hop into a new notebook and we're going to uh, we're gonna get started. So import numpy SDP or pandas SPD and matplot dot pyplot as plot. All right, so um, let's see. So basically, all right, the, the libraries we're going to need for today, we'll be using sklearn again. And because this is, um, you could imagine these kinds of features will very linearly predict the chance of admission, more or less. Because if 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 uh, students have high scores in many of these categories, they'll have a high chance of admission. And if they have low scores in many of these categories, they'll have a low chance of admission. So I think using linear regression in this case makes the most sense uh, because it's it's a very simple model for a very simple relationship. So we will import um, sklearn linear model. Uh, import linear regression and we will get a few other utilities from sklearn uh, we'll get a min max scalar to scale our features and we will use uh, the t train test split just to make to, to make our lives easier in processing the data. And we're also going to analyze the data using PCA, or Principal Component Analysis, to uh, better uh, visualize what's going on in the data set. Okay, so I'll run that. And we'll start by reading in the data and just looking at the looking at the data frame. So data equals pandas dot read CSV and the path is here. We'll use this uh, version 1.1 of the data set. So we read it in and we will just take a look at that. And we can see here, why don't I uh, pull this over? I don't really need that as much. Uh, the data um, looks pretty good. However, you can see we have this serial number column here, which is basically just a duplicate of our indices. So what we can do is actually here include uh, index column is serial number. And that will allow us to use the serial number column as our index column. All right, so next we will split the data between X and Y. You can see the chance of admission at the uh, end of the data frame is our, our Y, what we want to predict. And the rest of the data set is our X. So Y equals data chance of admit. And I think there's, there's a, a trailing space, so we have to make sure we include that. X equals data dot drop uh, chance of admit along the the row axis I mean column axis and yeah that's it okay so now we can just take a look why should be a vector containing all of our our um, chance of admission data and X should be the rest of the data set so cool. All right. 
So now we're going to use principal component analysis to make this data easier to understand. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different features. And although we can get a sense based on the data set that these features probably correspond to higher values of admission when the values themselves are higher, but to get a really uh, a better understanding to see that they're correlated, we, we want to take this uh, a single training example has seven features, so it's seven dimensional. And to understand uh, a seven dimensional vector is, you can't do it, it's impossible. So what we do is we'll reduce the dimensionality down to two dimensions so that we can plot it on a graph in a much easier to understand fashion. And the way to do that is called principal component analysis. The math behind it is uh, pretty complicated, but I might make a video in the future just uh, explaining it. Um, but basically, you just need to understand the principal component analysis will take a large dimensional data set and, and squish it down into two or three, a dimension of your choosing. But we'll use two dimensions, so it's easy for us to see. Okay, so PCA is equal to the PCA we imported from sklearn, and we choose the dimension that we want to compress it to. So now n components, it's going to be two. Uh, then we will fit it to our data x. This is an unsupervised learning algorithm, so we're not concerned with the labels at all during this. We're just going to analyze x uh, using the PCA. All right, so x. PCA is going to be our uh, dimensionality reduced data set. PCA.transform x. Okay, so if we take a look now at x PCA, all right, let's look at it like a data frame. You can see our previous um, 500 examples are still here. But now the number of features has been reduced to only two. And so these new features, they don't hold the same um, like meaning that the other features did, at least not, not visibly, because uh, these features, you know, we, can, we un clearly understand what each one means. But this is more of like an amalgamation of the other features. So um, to make it easier to understand, why don't we actually we'll actually set this to a data frame just I mean easier to visualize uh, columns it will be okay we'll call so PC1 and PC2 now by its nature um, by its nature PCA will sort the um, the principal components or the axes that it has been uh, squished onto in order of importance or order of uh, in terms of how much they uh, how do I explain it so PC1 is the axis along which the data is most spread out PC2 is the second most so we could do this uh, um, n all the way up to seven times and it would organize uh, it would ha we'd have no dimensionality reduction but it would organize it in terms of uh, the axes of most importance so PC1 we can think of as our primary uh, axis um, that, it, that sort of like underlies the whole data set so uh, to give you a better example of what I'm what I mean, why don't we plot these two PC1 and PC2 um, inside on a on a graph? So we'll do plot dot figure fig size do uh, 14 by 10, and we will plot dot scatter plot. Um, XPCA PC1 plotted against XPCA P2. 
PC2. Okay. All right. So this gives you a sense of what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, the data is now only in two dimensions, and this is PC1 on the bottom, uh, the horizontal axis. High values of PC1 should correspond to a certain kind of student, whereas low values of PC1 should correspond to another kind of student. So to see what that what that actually looks like, we can set we can sample these at each end and see what what the students' um, uh, scores are like. So we'll say PCA max is numpy dot argmax of this of the uh, PCA PC one column, and so this is saying get the student that corresponds to the highest value of PC1. And PCA min will be numpy.argmin x PCA PC1. And so we're not really concerned with PC2 because PC1 is, is primarily where the, uh, I mean, we could look at PC2, but PC1 is really what's, what's dominating the data set. Okay, so let's take a look at those. Say PCA max and PCA min. And we can see that example or student number 377 has the highest value of PCA of PC1. What, what I have to hold on. X label PC1. Should have done this before. Let's give you better understanding. PC1 on the bottom, PC2 up here. So, um, so student number 377 has the highest value of PC1. I don't know if it's here or here, one of these guys. And student number 202 has the lowest value of PC1. So probably this guy right here. Now what we're going to do is look at each of those students and try to understand why PC1 has split them apart. So we can say, uh, so we're going to get the, the data entry at PCA max and target all columns. And we'll do another one for the data entry at PCA min. Okay. So if we look at these two students, let's take a look. All right, first of all, look at this GPA. This guy has a 9.91 GPA. This guy has a 7.56 GPA. I assume it's scaled to 10. Uh, and overall, it looks like this, this student's scores are much higher than the student's scores. I mean, every single, every single uh, score is higher. The GRE score, the TOEFL score, the university rating is a little interesting because that's not actually a student's score, but uh, you can see just overall, huh? This person has a research background. This person does not. Got very high scores on the statement of purpose and the letter of recommendation, and the student did not. So what it looks like is maybe that at high values of PCA of PC1. This corresponds to students with low scores, and at low values of PC1, this corresponds to students with high scores. So we can see that there's there's clearly um, like a pretty strong relationship in the data between uh, the features, uh, like how the features affect each other. All right, so now we can move on to the predictions. And I think we'll start by scaling our data. So we'll use the min-max scaler to get all the values in x between 0 and 1. Min-max scaler and x equals scalar dot fit transform. So this combines the, the fit function and the transform function and gives us back an x that has been scaled. So now if we take a look at x, it should be, hold on, 
x is now all between 0 and 1, which will make it easier for our model to train. OK. So now we'll use the train test split, x train, x test, y train, y test, train, test, split, x, and y. We'll have a train size of 0.8, 80%. And I, f I recently found out that there's actually a shuffle feature enabled by default, but um, I, before I was manually shuffling the data, but if I use this function, it shouldn't matter. So this is good. Uh, and run that. So now we have our x train, x test, y train, x, y test. And so we can define our model. Linear regression and model.fit x train, y train. All right, let's see how it performed. Model.score, x test, y test. And actually, if 84%, so that's actually pretty good. This means we can, um, you know, the, the test set is only 100 examples, so I'm not, it's not really, uh, Ideally, we'd want a larger test set, probably a larger training set too. This is a very small data set, but um, th you know this is pretty decent for what we have. Uh, now, all right, l let's take a, let's take a little closer look. Our prediction array will be um, model dot predict x test, and if we just take a look at that, what that's doing. This is all our predictions, just a vector containing 500, it should be. Oh no, uh, 100 predictions. One for each test example. And so what we can do is plot it. So uh, so we'll plot predictions against the, the actual test examples. And we want it with dots. Uh, the label on the bottom should be predicted value. And the vertical label, actual value. So predicted value corresponds to our predictions. Actual value corresponds to the actual test example labels. OK. And you can see, for the most part, as given by our, our 84%, our predictive values are very often equal to our actual values. Right? This is the y equals x line. This means they're about equal. All right, so I think that wraps up today's video. I'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and leave any comments in the description if you uh, have any recommendations or would like to see new features or new uh, new models, new anything. So thanks a lot. See you tomorrow.